A new permanent gallery showcasing Singapore's media history was recently launched at the National Library. The exhibition features how significant episodes in Singapore's history were reported by different media. This includes breaking news events such as the 1992 chewing gum ban and the 1950 Maria Hertog riots. It aims to educate the public on differences between falsehoods and real news. Well, for more on how to better discern fact from falsehoods, we're joined by Benjamin Ang, Senior Fellow and Deputy Head of the RSIS Centre of Excellence for National Security. Benjamin, let's talk about how information sharing has transformed. So, what are the changes you've noticed over the years? You know, how is fake news today different from fake news in the past? Just taking the example of the um, exhibit that the NLB, in the past, fake news would have to travel on the newspapers or on broadcast media. And today, it can travel really quickly on social media or through messaging, through messaging apps. And it's much faster and much more difficult to catch. Well, Benjamin, part of the reason why it's harder and more difficult to catch is perhaps because some of that fake news looks very real to some people. So the exhibition is aiming to teach them uh, the difference between real and fake news. Why is it so important for us to be able to differentiate between the two? There's a lot of danger that can come from people believing fake news. If you just look at the exhibition, it really drives home with the Maria Hertog case. If you actually read the newspaper reports, they look so realistic and you can understand how people would have been driven to emotional responses and driven to riots. And it's not something just of the past. Just a few weeks ago in the Ukraine, an entire town was turned into riots based on coronavirus fake news because they thought that there were going to be infected people brought into their town. So they actually rioted. And this is something that's happening in our very day and age. So we have to be able to sort out the fake from the true. Otherwise, there can be results where people get hurt. But during a time such as this current COVID-19 pandemic, you know, we see information of all sorts online. So what are some methods people can actually use to authenticate what they're actually seeing? There are some very good ways of building your own media and digital literacy. And the NLB has the SURE method, S-U-R-E. And you can check that up on the NLB website. And there are also local fact-checking groups like SURE or not, that's S-U-R-E, and then are not ANOT, and they have a fact checking um, service that you can actually join a WhatsApp group that will actually verify the news which you forwarded to them. But mainly as individuals, we need to take responsibility. We have to remember when we receive a message check first, don't share. Check first, don't share. Benjamin, very quickly, a, a, a quick final question for you. Why is it so easy for people to fall prey to this fake news, though? We're st we know people are still falling for it. It's a very human instinct to try and protect your friends and family when you see something alarming, and especially when it comes to you in a medium which is so immediate and it's with you all the time. And we are not yet wired to check what we receive digitally. So we need to build that habit. We can. We can build the habit to stop first, check first, don't share. Mm. Being able to discern falsehoods, especially at this time of, of this COVID-19 pandemic, essential. Benjamin, thank you very much for speaking to us. Benjamin Ang, a senior fellow and deputy head of the RSIS Center of Excellence for National Security.